we're going to hear today from uh, a lot of uh, lawyers and a lot of doctors. I'm a lawyer, and I'm telling you, there's not much we can do for you now. Um, I've been practicing law uh, and teaching law, uh, mostly teaching law for 30 years, uh, practicing law before that, uh, and my two and a half years in the Bush White House as the chief White House ethics lawyer. Um, the Constitution never contemplated this much power for the President of the United States. I teach a seminar on presidential power, and we're discussing that uh, just this uh, semester. But we've had a steady growth of presidential power. Uh, domestically, since Abraham Lincoln, he had to suspend habeas corpus in order to fight the Civil War, but without the consent of Congress. And uh, internationally, since Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, and uh, we have seen more and more presidential power uh, with uh, fewer and fewer checks coming from Congress and from the courts. We have never successfully removed a president of the United States through impeachment, uh, unless you want to count Richard Nixon, uh, who, who finally resigned after Republicans had the courage to stand up against him and tell him it was time to go. A courage we do not see in today's Congress, bipartisan courage. Uh, we see the two failed impeachments of Donald Trump uh, conducted without evidence being admitted uh, with a predetermined vote uh, of the United States Senate. Uh, Congress isn't going to help us. The courts, the Supreme Court of the United States this summer said that the President of the United States has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for acts within his core constitutional powers which include his powers as commander in chief. Absolute immunity and a strong presumption of immunity in all other official acts. Now, we've had a president who believed that overturning a, a election that he lost was an official act, and therefore he's entitled to immunity. I would beg to differ. And I testified just recently in Arizona in the uh, Mark Meadows removal hearing uh, where the similar arguments were made. Uh, and the uh, Trump versus United States case is going to go back to the federal district court to sort that out. But the fact of the matter is, that the Supreme Court of the United States has extended broad immunity to the president, and we're going to have not only the president, but people working for the president claiming immunity for crimes, including war crimes. We're going to go back to the days of the torture memos that have made my views very, very clear about what happened there, where Justice Department lawyers were opining that the torture statute, the criminal statute prohibiting torture was unconstitutional and therefore can be ignored, because Article II power of the president trumps everything. Now, we cannot accept this legal regime. We will not endure as a democracy under such a regime, but it is going to take time to change it. It is going to take time to persuade our courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, that they have failed to stand up against abuse of presidential power and against the grave risk of a criminal president. It will take time to elect new members of Congress who I hope will come from both political parties who will put their country first, not their partisan loyalties. But until then, we have to take extraordinary care to make absolutely sure that the person who holds the highest office in the land is mentally fit, morally fit for office. And you've heard a lot from me as a lawyer, whether I comment on TV or I write op-eds, and you've heard more from other lawyers you'll hear today. But I want to emphasize how important it is to hear from mental health professionals, such as Dr. Bandy Lee, who have the right, the constitutional right, to speak their minds. And the, you know, it's critically important that mental health experts speak out. The Goldwater Rule restricting their freedom of speech, private associations seeking to restrict the freedom of speech of their members are doing grave harm to our democracy. We need to hear from Bandy, we need to hear from her colleagues, and we need to hear before it's too late.